So now we need to talk about handling token expiration. And we actually saw this a little bit earlier, right? We saw when we decoded our JWT, there was an expiration. Now the expiration itself, even though that's on our resource token and that comes from Azure, uh, Azure will actually use the expiration that the original access token had. The access token is the identity token from our IDP. Now our IDP often will give a access token as well as something else called a refresh token. So when the access token expires, that's what we're going to use for our Azure web services or our Azure app services expiration as well. And when our resource token expires, in other words, our resource token is no longer valid, we're going to get a 401 unauthorized whenever we're trying to access our endpoints. Now, of course, we saw earlier something that looked a bit like this and we saw that expiration. That's how we're going to be able to tell when expiration is going to occur. Now, this of course isn't so simple because as we know, our JWT is base64 encoded. And then even once you've unencoded it, you've now got a number of ticks since January 1st, 1970. So a little bit of decoding is in fact obviously required if you actually want to figure out what's going on there. Now again, Azure is going to decide how long to make this by taking its queue from the identity provider. So our resource token takes its queue from the identity provider. And we could do the parsing and check to see when is our token going to expire, right? We want to check that to see when is it, is it nearing expiration. And then if so, which again involves, you know, some base 64 encoding and, and all that good stuff. And, and if so, then we need to do something. Now, if it's not expired, then we're good to go. We just call our endpoint. We're going to need to talk about this something though, right? So if it is expired, then what? Well, our client SDK, our Azure client SDK provides us some help. There's built in handling here through something called refresh tokens. And so the reason I differentiated between access tokens, when I talked about what our identity provider gives us, our identity provider, of course, gives us the identity tokens, right? We call login async. We know about this. We do that to Azure. Azure is opening up the web view, or rather we're opening the web view and going to, to Azure. And then at that point, our IDP, in this case also Azure, but that might be Twitter or anything else, that gives us our identity token. Now our identity token though, usually we're talking about the access token. However, it will also sometimes give us a refresh token. So let's see how this works. We get our access and refresh tokens back to our Azure mobile app. Remember our Azure mobile app, we said enable the key store. So it holds on to, it saves both access and refresh token, and it generates and returns to our client mobile app, a resource token. This of course has an expiration, which as I said, is going to be reflective of the access tokens expiration. This is going to expire about the same time. We make our calls, everything is fine and dandy until it's not. At that point when it's not fine and dandy, what we're going to do is make a call to request a refresh. When we call refresh token, we call refresh, Azure will get the refresh token that it stored. And as well, it will use its IDP client key and client secret. We looked at how to configure those for an IDP earlier. So between the refresh token, the client ID and the client secret, the IDP has enough information that it will issue a new access token. Sometimes it will also issue a new refresh token or sometimes it will just expect you to keep using the same refresh token that is IDP dependent, that's specific to each IDP. But at this point it has a new access token. So now Azure stores that new access token and it will give us our new resource token. So that refresh token then lives longer than the access token. Um, the essential reason for this, and this always confuses people, it's, it, it is a little bit of, of um, it is a little bit overkill in a lot of instances. However, the access token is obviously getting passed around a lot. It's getting used frequently. Therefore, it's in headers all over the place. It's much more likely to be compromised and we can then revoke an access token. So the, the IDP, for instance, could revoke an access token if it finds it suspect. So taking a quick look at the workflow that might be involved in our code, we would basically check to see, do we have a current user at the moment? If we do, is the token expired? 
If not, then everything's fine, right? We just use that user. If the token's expired, try to refresh the token. If that works, then again, everything's fine, right? We store the current user and start using that user. If refresh fails, then we have to go back to the original login process again. In other words, the refresh token itself might also be expired. And that happens. I mean, sometimes refresh tokens last for a year, but a year is still eventually going to pass. Or sometimes the refresh token was, as I mentioned, itself revoked. Either way, if this fails, we then will call login async again. This just opens up the web view again. Once again, the user is expected to give their username and password or interact with the IDP. And then, of course, we can save our user as per usual. Now, our IDPs all have their own requirements about when they'll allow a refresh token. Uh, sometimes you have to configure it in their administration consoles. Sometimes you have to send additional data. Sometimes they always send them, but it's IDP specific on when they'll actually provide you a refresh token. So you need to be careful to monitor that. Google, for instance, will expect you to send an additional query string parameter, uh, which you can do through our client by adding it to that dictionary that we have as extra parameters when calling login async. This will end up passing it as an additional query string to Google. So setting access type offline. This is the, the magic formula to get Google to include an access token, a refresh token. Microsoft accounts can be set up through the Azure portal, when you're setting up your actual Microsoft account settings, you will request the WL offline scope in that Microsoft account area. So like I said, each IDP has their own specific way of doing this, their own specific way of having you do something to assert that you need to get a refresh token. Then once you have the refresh token, then that refresh method will be available to us. As mentioned, eventually refresh tokens will stop working themselves. If refresh fails, then you have to go back through that full login flow where the user is actually interacting with the web view. Eventually, even refresh tokens expire. Uh, you cannot refresh things that have been expired for greater than 72 hours by specification. And again, if things are revoked, then you'll have to go through full login flow again. Now, whether it's because the user wants to log off or because you failed to be able to refresh or because you didn't even get a refresh token and your access token expired, regardless, at some points, you're going to need to clear your user data. And so there are several steps involved in that. First, you'll want to make sure that the mobile service client has logout cleared. That should clear the current user property. However, here we're debug asserting I would actually suggest go ahead and set client.currentuser equals null as well. That never hurts. If you have any other sort of local storage of user information, like perhaps you were storing the token using secure storage, like we talked about earlier, make sure that's clear. This all takes care of the client side. Then you still need to hit the server side and tell it to log off. Because remember, our server is still likely to be holding on to access tokens and refresh tokens possibly from the IDP. So let's make sure that all of that is cleared as well. You can do that by hitting the dot off slash logout endpoint. Since our endpoint here actually does require the token so that it knows what to delete on the server side, you should actually do the server stuff before calling client.logout async. So just make sure you have the order correct on that. Server endpoint first, and then logout async method locally, which will actually clear that current user property. And if you're having any issues with login or for that matter, anything else on your endpoint, don't forget, you can always open up those streaming logs. We actually look at how to check your logs in Azure 110. So you can always just check your logs and see what's going on. This will include any kind of authentication issues.